Hello and welcome to my kitchen. My husband had an auntie who lived in Andhra. She used to make a type of delicious egg masala which he loved. So whenever she came home, he would ask her to prepare that curry along with hot rice and rasam. Unfortunately, she passed away a few years ago, but in loving memory of her and in appreciation of her goodness and love today i'm going to show you how that egg masala is made so let's get started for this i have taken egg 11 onion 5 tomatoes 4 ginger garlic paste 2 teaspoon turmeric powder half of a teaspoon cumin powder 3 quarter of a teaspoon coriander powder 2 heaped teaspoon red chili powder 1 teaspoon kashmiri red chili powder 1 teaspoon roasted aniseed 1 teaspoon kasuri methi 2 pinch bay leaf 2 coriander leaf half of a small bowl salt to taste oil 5 tablespoon approximately Heat a wide bottomed pan and pour 5 tablespoons of oil into it. I am making this dish for some guests to celebrate a special occasion. Hence, I intend to add 11 eggs. You can modify the ingredients based on the number of eggs you will be using for the preparation. Add 2 bay leaves followed by thinly sliced onions. Here I am adding in 3 fourth of a teaspoon salt in it. While the onions are cooking through, put the eggs into a large saucepan, cover generously with water and bring to the boil. When the water comes to a boil, turn the heat down to a simmer and cook for about 6 minutes for getting that well set hard boiled eggs. Now our onions are half fried and I am adding in 2 teaspoons of ginger garlic paste and fry them nicely. Previously I had taken a turmeric powder, red chilli powder Kashmiri red chilli powder and coriander powder along with 3 tablespoon water in a bowl and mixed them using a spoon to make a fine paste out of it. Instead of adding dry masala, this method reduces the chances of the masalas getting burnt quickly. And once the ginger garlic and onion mix is nicely fried and a rich aroma comes out, I have added the masala paste to give it a nice fry until all the raw smell goes away. While frying, make sure that you keep the flame at a medium level. As we keep stirring, the oil is slowly getting absorbed and our onion and ginger garlic paste have combined well. The nice brownish red color and the texture of our masala tells us it's time to drop in our diced tomatoes. Continue to fry the tomatoes until they become soft and mushy. Put some pressure on the spatula and pat the tomatoes to ensure they get soft on the inside as well. While at the other side, when the eggs are fully boiled, Plunge them into cold water for a couple of minutes and then peel them, rinse them and set them aside. The tomatoes have softened and it's time to add the aniseed. If you wish you can substitute the aniseed with fennel seeds. Mix well and let the flavor of aniseed get into our masala. Now we shall add 2 pinch of kasuri methi to open another dimension of flavor to our gravy. Meanwhile the egg have been boiled, peeled and are now waiting to enter the gravy. Before adding them, cut small slits onto the egg surface and gently lower them into the mix. 
Take your time to move around the eggs patiently. If the slits are somewhat big, then take care to do this gently and avoid breaking the eggs. Once the eggs are coated and covered with masala, I'm introducing our last ingredient, the coriander leaves, into the masala. Once again, mix well and allow the masala to be saturated with the flavor or fresh coriander leaves. This kind of egg masala goes very well with chapati, paratha, puri and lime rice. Therefore, they are well suited to carry along while traveling long distances. My husband used to narrate interesting childhood experiences while going on pilgrimage with his family to Velankani. And this egg masala always found an honorable mention due to its exceptional taste and the amazing way it served its purpose. Those long train journeys during childhood remain so nostalgic. Now it's time to close the lid and cook for a couple of minutes. It's done. The dish looks and smells just fantastic. Now let's transfer our preparation into a bowl and garnish them with some more coriander leaves. Throw in some lemon juice if you wish to eat with dal and rice and see the magic. I'm not adding lemon since I have prepared lime rice to accompany the eggs. So give this recipe a try and enjoy your cooking. Thank you for watching. Let me know how it turned out and I'll see you with another recipe in the next video. Until then, enjoy life. God bless you.